I think the best way to, to understand how we can speak about God being one and also three, one God, one divine nature, one divine essence, three persons in God who are God. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, but the Father is not the Son and the Son is not the Holy Spirit. So there's distinction in the one divine essence, the distinction among the persons. How do we understand uh, that truth? The easiest way, I think, is to use what Aquinas would consider to be the best analogy, the best created analogy for understanding how there could be distinction within one being, one spiritual being. And he uses the analogy of a human mind. So a human mind that conceives a word and loves a word. Okay, more on that in just a second. Uh, but to go back to uh, the names Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you'll notice immediately when we talk about Father and Son that these names are correlative. They speak about a relation, Father and Son. And that's very important for understanding what we're talking about when we're talking about a divine person. For Aquinas, a divine person is a relation, a subsistent relation, a relation in the divine essence, one divine essence, and then these relations of origin. What do we mean by that? Well, uh, if you think about the way father and son are related terms, if you have um, a, a father who has only one child, that man was not a father before his son was a son. He became a father at the moment his son became a son. So they are directly correlative. There is no fatherhood without a child. And you cannot be a child without having a father or a parent. So in God, when we use these names, we're talking about an eternally reciprocal relation. And that's also true about the Holy Spirit, although the name is a little less evident. Uh, okay, back to the psychological analogy or this analogy, this human analogy of a mind speaking a word and loving it. Aquinas thinks that we can use an analogy of the way our own minds conceive of a word and love it to understand how God breathes forth or speaks rather the word and breathes forth the, the Holy Spirit as love. And it would go something like this. If we imagine ourselves, we can conceive an idea of ourselves in our minds. And if our intellects were perfect enough, if we understood ourselves perfectly enough, the image in our minds would correspond precisely to who we really are. Now, in fact, that's generally not the case with us. We, we remain kind of opaque to ourselves. We don't understand ourselves perfectly. But God, who is a perfect intellect, God can conceive himself and express himself in one thought, one word. And that word, since it is perfect and comes from a perfect intellect, expresses absolutely everything that God is. In fact, it's identical to God, that word. The only distinction between that word and God who speaks the word is the fact that one is speaking or conceiving, begetting the word, and the other is begotten. Aquinas thinks that now we're getting somewhere. We understand that this conception, God thinking himself, remains in God and is identical to God. It is God, so there's distinction and unity, the unity of the divinity. And then in a second moment, we can say God understanding himself perfectly by speaking this word, or the word which really more properly is the, the fruit of God understanding himself perfectly, then loves what he knows. And that love, that perfect goodness that is the word and that is the Father, that is God, that perfect goodness is perfectly lovable and God loves it in a way that sort of breathes forth the love of God in person, the person of the Holy Spirit, who is the, the mutual love of the Father and the Son. So these are uh, the best ways Aquinas thinks for understanding how we can understand a distinction in God without 
there being more than one God. There is one divinity, God the Father, speaking his word and loving his word in the expression of the Holy Spirit.